All right, guys, so we're about 60 days away from the NFL draft this year, a prime opportunity for the Baltimore Ravens to get better as a football team. So welcome in to our first episode of our Mock Draft Monday of the 2024 NFL offseason. We did this last year. You guys really seem to enjoy it. And I've had some people in the comment section below saying, hey, man, when's Mock Draft Monday coming back? And here it is. So we got a three-round Baltimore Ravens Mock Draft for you guys. It's really exciting. Draft season is one of my favorite times of the year because you have an opportunity to instantly transform your team. Look what the Ravens did in the 2018 draft, grabbing you know an all-pro tight end Mark Andrews. Of course, the two-time MVP quarterback Lamar Jackson, among other um, really good football players. And if you look back, I mean the Ravens, they get talented guys all throughout the rounds. You know, later in the in the draft, early in the draft, and then you never know when a top player can fall to you, like. Kyle Hamilton, who was supposed to go top five, top 10, falls to the Ravens at pick number 14, or whenever you can get an all pro 13 sack defensive tackle and just amount of BK in the third round, man, you just never know. So here we go with the 30th pick in the 2024 NFL draft. The Baltimore Ravens beef up the offensive line and grab the offensive tackle, Armarius Mims. Another guy I really like here is Tyler Guyton if he's around and there's like Troy Fatano. Unless a, an elite wide receiver prospect or another really high graded prospect falls to you at this spot, man, I think you got to go offensive line, whether it's guard, whether it's offensive tackle. And in this case, we don't know quite yet if the Ravens are going to keep Morgan Moses and or Ronnie Stanley. However, you definitely want to get some more young talent in the pipeline to develop behind those guys even if they do stick around this season plus they both dealt with injury issues and are getting older in their career so a guy like Armarius Mims could instantly come in go ahead and you know start for left guard or right guard because it's looking like Kevin Zeitler is not coming back and then also be available if one of these guys get gets and then also be available if one of these guys gets injured or if you really like how he looks in training camp and whatnot, you could even release Morgan Moses or Ronnie Stanley to save some money on the salary cap. So by bringing in an offensive tackle in the first round, you keep Lamar Jackson clean long term. You keep offensive line talent on the roster. You have insurance policies, whether you release Ronnie Stanley or Morgan Moses or one of them goes down with injury. Now, what I like about Amarius Mims is, first of all, he's a Georgia product. So we'll have some familiarity there with Todd Munkin and uh, you know the relationship they have over there with the Georgia guys. The exciting part about him is his movement skills. Amarius Mims is not only 6'7", 330 pounds with no really bad weight. This guy is like, it's real weight. This wasn't like Orlando Brown Jr. coming out of the draft. This guy has some real mass on him. Um, elite length, elite mass, size, and then he can move. When he gets out in space, you know, and he's uh, getting on the second and third level, blocking some linebackers and safeties, he can move like a tight end. Like, he's that athletic. And the reason why I think he could fall to this spot in the draft is because he has had some injury issues, and I believe only had one year as a starter. But the athletic tools, but when you talk about getting an elite offensive tackle prospect this late in the draft because of those tools, um, I'm all for it, especially with how strong our offensive line coaching staff is. These guys develop well. I fully believe in the Ravens coaching staff to be able to groom up some of these tools that Armarius Mims has. I mean, this guy could be a book and tackle for years to come, protecting Lamar Jackson um, from these pass rushers trying to get after him. And he's got the size. He can dominate in pass protection with the speed, the athleticism, the length, and He's really athletic to get out there as a run blocker as well and very, very strong. So I love our Marius Mims in the first round. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. In the second round, I have the Baltimore Ravens going with the speedy wide receiver, Devontez Walker. He's 6'2", 197 pounds. What I like about this wide receiver prospect, and trust me, I like a lot of these wide receiver prospects in this year's draft. I was looking for a guy that can stretch the field vertically but also has a little bit of size. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be like a 6'4", DK Metcalf, rocked up type of guy. That would be great. 
but you're probably not going to find that type of guy in the second round. What I really like about Devontae Walker is his not only elite long speed, but this acceleration. If you don't press this guy off the line, he's a problem. He will run right past you. He's got that speed. Now, remember some of those shots that Lamar Jackson and Marquise Brown were connecting on. I'm not saying that Zay Flowers uh, can't stretch the field vertically, but he's more of a speedy, shifty, get the ball in his hands, make guys miss. He can get open deep. You know, he can run great routes, but I'm looking for another burner. I'm talking a guy that can take the top right off the defense, some more speed for defenses to worry about. Man, you worry about Devontae Walker or Zay Flowers running right past you. Then you got Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely with their very sharp route running. Man, just eating and feasting over the middle. You can never have enough weapons for your quarterback. The Ravens, in this mock draft, they add an offensive tackle to protect Lamar Jackson, another weapon for Lamar Jackson to catch the ball with elite acceleration because Nelson Aguilar, man, he reminds me a little bit of Nelson Aguilar as far as the body size, the body, um, his frame. He does look like Nelson Aguilar's frame a little bit because he's kind of slender but kind of long as well, but he's got speed. Um, not saying he's Nelson Aguilar, but, man, he's got elite acceleration, long speed, uh, absolutely destroys free releases like we were saying. He has really nice soft hands as well, man. He can pluck the ball right out of the air. He can fight in traffic. Um, the weakness here to me, the reason why I think he could fall to the second round is, first of all, there's a lot of really good wide receivers in this draft. And second of all, the route running is not necessarily polished yet. You know, But that doesn't concern me too much because of Keith Williams and how he's been able to develop Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers in their route running. And, man, they look really sharp in their routes. So I believe that Devontae Walker could come in and develop that aspect of his game. Uh, you know, route running is something that you can teach. But that elite, elite speed downfield, the soft hands, um, some of these other things you can't necessarily teach. Plus, the Ravens do have some guys that can run routes like Zay, like Bate, like Nelly. And I think De- Devontae Walker adds another speed element to the offense and could uh, add some more big play aspects to the Baltimore Ravens and you know Todd Munkin's offense in 2024. My third round pick. Uh, So happens to be another offensive player, but man, do I love this player, Bucky Irving. If he falls to the third round, which he did in a lot of the mock draft simulators I was doing, uh, Bucky Irving, man, he would easily be my top pick, man. He got, he gives me a little bit of a Jameer Gibbs vibe, not saying he's Jameer Gibbs, you know, he was a first round running back in this last year's draft, but he also gives me some Austin Eckler vibes where he's just, they can really chisel chisel right in between the tackles. Like find a little bit of space, squeeze through it, and then boom, again, they just get shot out of all that mud like a cannon. And, you know, sometimes you'll see Bucky Irving because he's a little bit of a shorter guy. He's 5'10", 195 pounds, but he's still got, trust me, he's got grit and he's got power. But sometimes he can get lost in a little bit in the mud, and then you see him all of a sudden, boom, and he just shoots out like a cannon he's got a rare combination of agility and contact balance man he's very fast very elusive I think he's gonna run you know in the 4-4 range we'll see where that goes at the combine but check this out in 13 games last year in college he ran for 1,075 yards on only 172 attempts averaging 6.3 yards a pop he also added 10 rushing touchdowns with only one fumble and as a receiver, had 52 catches for 377 yards. So maybe he's not a huge in-between-the-tackle runner, but, man, I want him on my football team. I also looked at Aldrich Estime here, the Notre Dame running back, but he's had some fumble issues, and he doesn't really have that breakaway speed. There's a couple of running backs I do like here, like Braylon Allen, Bucky Irving, uh, Aldrich Estime. Any of those guys in this range here in the third round, I would be more than happy, you know, picking one of these guys up. So I didn't really plan this out. It just so happened to be where my top three picks were offensive players. And I know that probably won't shake out that way, but this is my three round mock draft, the first one of the off season. And we're going to be doing these every Monday. All right. So mock draft Monday is officially back. Let me know in the comment section below, man, your favorite, you know, three round Ravens mock draft. Plus, if there's any players that you guys want me to check out, man, I'll, I will gladly go check them out because uh, I'm getting pretty deep into my 
draft preparation, looking at these prospects. Um, a lot of offensive linemen I like, which is great for the Ravens because they need to get younger there and add some more talent. A lot of receivers I like to add some more depth and talent there. There's some running backs I like. It's not as deep in the running back class. There's also a lot of defensive tackles. It's not a super top-heavy cornerback class where there's like going to be a bunch of guys going in the first round at corner. But there's some corners that are talented in this class as well. So a lot of talent in this draft. Um, a huge opportunity for the Ravens to get better as a football team. We know their history in recent drafts. And really, going all the way back to you know 1996, when, when the Ravens came to life, they've been a great drafting football team, drafting guys like Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Haloti Nada, Lamar Jackson. You can go to back to Joe Flacco winning the Super Bowl. Man, tons of players. And you just never know, man. When you get one of these drafts, you never know the next legend, the next Ravens legend that could uh, be birthed out of it. And, man, it's really exciting. So smash the like button if you enjoyed today's content. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so we can keep you up to date on all of our Baltimore Ravens news and content. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey, Ray, when he wasn't looking, he ran me over.